you are talking about us, Father, this morning as we come, we give you glory and praise. We bless, magnify, edify, glorify, and exalt you, Father, for you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and we humble ourselves and exalt you and acknowledge that there is no God like Jehovah Jireh. There is no God like Elohim. There is no God like Yahweh. You're the first, the last, the Alpha, the Omega. You're the beginning and the end, and for that we humble ourselves and we exalt you, Jesus, in all things. Holy Spirit, we bless you now. Holy Spirit, we adore you now. Father, we just adore your kingdom. We bless you, Jehovah Jireh, and Jehovah Nisha, El Shaddai, Elohim, Jehovah Mekadesh, Jehovah Tiskanu, Jehovah Elroy, Jehovah Raphael, our shield, our banner, our fortress. We just give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. We bless you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. As we enter your presence, we repent of all sin, all iniquity, all ungodliness, all unholiness. Father, everything we have said, done, thought, or imagined that would keep you from getting the glory this morning. We humble ourselves and we acknowledge you. We bind Satan and every spirit of the adversary, Father, that would keep you from getting all the glory. Now release a fresh anointing, a fresh oil and a fresh fire upon us now that you will be glorified, that you will be edified, and that you will be exalted. Anoint your word in the Father, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And it is in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Sponsor Barry Spates, the Barry Spates Ministries. I want to take the time to thank you so much for viewing uh, this video this morning. It's the word the Lord put in my spirit. And I began to study it this morning, and I wanted to kind of release some measures to the body of Christ, dealing with basically overcoming the attacks of the enemy, breaking the strongholds, over overcoming the attacks of the enemy, and breaking his stronghold. I think the enemy has so many strongholds on the body of Christ and they have so many strongholds on those that are seeking to be delivered and to be free from our Heavenly Father through the Holy Spirit and through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm going to be coming out of the book of um, St. John chapter 16. St. John chapter 16. And it reads as following. Let's, let's start to, um, with the 30 or uh, second verse in chapter 16. It says, Beloved, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered every man in his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Look at Jesus says in verse 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulations. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So we see in this particular verse that Jesus Christ has overcome the world. He's overcome the attacks of Satan. He stripped Satan of all power. He stripped Satan of all authority. The word says that when he died and rose on the third day, he got up with all power and with all authority in heaven and in earth. <coughs> Excuse me. So we know the enemy is defeated. We know Satan is defeated. And we know, we know that God has given us victory over the enemy. He's given us victory over strongholds. And, and basically, you say, well, Apostle, what is overcoming? Because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about breaking the strongholds of the enemy. We're talking about overcoming every stronghold. Now, overcoming is to get the better of a struggle. That's what overcoming is. When you get the better of a struggle or conflict, in other words, it does not control you, but you are now controlling it. It is to conquer. It is to defeat. When you when you get control of uh, of uh, the attacks of the enemy, you you not only do you get control, but you overcome or you conquer or you defeat Satan. When you defeat the enemy, you have overcome. In other words, whatever the enemy designs that you do. As a result of you getting in the presence of God and seeking the Lord for victory in this matter, for victory in this situation, God makes you an overcomer. In other words, you overcome. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're overcomers. Now, one of the things I want you to understand is when we overcome, we overcome the enemy. We overcome uh, the devil. We overcome, basically, opposition. So any, anything that the enemy tries to use against us, we overcome. We prevail. To overcome means to prevail. To overcome means to uh, not only prevail, 
but it means to overpower. When you overcome, you overpower the force or that attack of the enemy coming at you. See, sometimes we deal with certain issues and certain matters, and I'm going to be talking about a few of those in just a minute, but we deal with certain issues and certain matters in our lives, and we don't know how to overcome those situations. We don't know how to overcome those matters. Well, let me tell you something. First of all, without Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's all impossible. It is impossible to overcome because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. So if we don't have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're battling and we're fighting in a battle that we may never be victorious in. Because it is Jesus that breaks strongholds. It is the power of God that breaks the shackles of the enemy, the strongholds of Satan. Now, so we overcome through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you don't know Jesus, it's impossible, not almost, but it's impossible for you to overcome any situation or any, any trial. And when you overcome, that means you break free from it. It no longer controls you. But now Jesus Christ controls it through you, meaning that you die and Christ resurrects. And when the enemy <coughs> excuse me, would come at you, he can no longer come at you now because you are being controlled by the power and the authority of our Lord and Savior through the Holy Ghost, through Jesus Christ. The enemy don't want you to know that God can give you control. He don't want you to know that you can be delivered, that you can be set free. He don't want you to know that if you seek deliverance, you can get deliverance. One of the things about deliverance, it means to be totally free from whatever's holding you. Uh, the, the, the Bible says, whom the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. So when Jesus came, when he died on the cross, cross he died that you may be free. He died that you may be delivered. He died that, that whatever the adversary tries to hold you, whatever strong he tries to put on you, you can break free from that. Let me tell you something. Strongholds are nothing more than demonic forces. They're nothing more than demonic attacks. They're nothing more than, than spirits looking for a body to live in or to dwell in. Nothing more than spirit than spirits having cravings that are against kingdom, having cravings that are against uh, the Holy Spirit, that are against righteousness. They're nothing more than demonic forces that crave sin, they crave iniquity, they crave ungodliness, they crave unholiness, they crave unrighteousness. In other words, anything that is, that is anti-Christ, these demonic forces of Satan, these demonic forces of Lucifer, these demonic forces of, of the devil, they crave and they come and they come inside of you without permission to be them. And they set up camp inside of you. They'll whisper something in your spirit and all of a sudden you get a desire to do it. And after you get that desire, it's on because they begin to take control. And all of a sudden you lose control because now you've given the spirit control. See, anytime you allow a spirit in, you grant him access to do whatever he wants to do. And when spirits come in, that's what they're doing today. I want to talk about a few spirits that have us uh, in captivity. A few spirits that have us being controlled. Now, we know doctors call some of these spirits sickness and disease. But before they became sicknesses and before they became diseases, they started somewhere. And they initiated or uh, 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 the period that they started was when you invited them in. In other words, you indulged in some type of sinful nature. And when you indulged in that sinful nature, you gave that spirit permission to be there. This is the reason the word says in James 4 and 7, submit yourselves unto God, resist the devil, and he shall flee from thee. See, when you submit to God, you surrender your will. You bow down, you yield. And when you bow down and when you yield, Satan no longer has power. Satan no longer has authority because you're surrendering your will. And now the will of the Father is come in and is taking over. Now, I want you to look at this verse again, verse number 33, because I want you to catch how Jesus says in verse number 33, St. John chapter 16, he says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. So Jesus says, first of all, I want you to have peace, shalom. You will find that many people, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a bad cough this morning. You will find that many people have a struggle. And one of the struggles that they have is they will not surrender to the will of God. They struggle with different attacks of the enemy. And not only do they struggle with these attacks, but they've been struggling with these attacks for years. But today we're going to give you some strategies. We're going to give you the word of God that will break these strategies. As I was reading before I coughed, I want to go back because I don't want to lose my thought. These things I've spoken unto you, 
that in me you have peace. And I was about to say, in God there's perfect peace. In Jesus Christ there's perfect peace. Jesus speaks in this verse. He says, in me you have peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding. Shalom, an inner peace. An inner peace. See, an outer peace is okay. But when you have that inner peace, you're not shaken by what goes on around you. You're not shaken by the attacks of the enemy. You're not controlled by what the enemy does because God gives you a peace that overcomes that. He says in the, in, in verse, the second part of that verse, he says, in the world you shall have tribulation. So it's expected to go through trials. It's expected to go through hardship. It's expected to go through, through, through things that are beyond your control. It's expected to be attacked. That's what tribulation is. It's hardship. It's, it's, it's continuous trials and tribulations. It's continuous suffering. But God will deliver you. He will bring you out. He says, but I have overcome the world. So see, Jesus has overcome the world. So there's no reason for you to remain there. There's no reason for you to continue in it. You can be delivered. You can be set free. Because Jesus said, as I said before, whom the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. I want to name a couple of things that, that Satan uses against us and that he used over us. One of the main things he used are addictions. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Addictions. The devil controls us through addictions. He controls us through alcoholism. A drinking of alcohol is an addiction. It may start off uh, as, a, as a social thing at first. But then when the enemy comes in, when the spirit of that demon that you've invited in begins to take control, it goes from a social to beyond control. In other words, you, you have a desire for it. You, you, you lust after it. And then there's a desire in your spirit continuously. In other words, there's a craving in your spirit. And when that craving comes in your spirit, what the enemy does is that spirit begins to crave alcohol. And even though you want to quit, even though you want to stop, even though you, you've been to counseling, you've been to AAA and all the different places that you can think of to get some kind of help, whether it's for alcoholism or it's just drug addiction, abuse of drugs, and you've gone and gone and seemed like every time you go and you come back again and you get attacked again. In other words, that craving comes back. It's because even though you're being uh, taught and you're being trained uh, what to do and how to move when that desire comes, what do people, you have people you call or, 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 or partners that you call and you talk to and you tell them where you are right now. But see, the people that you call and talk to, they don't have the power and the authority that Jesus has. So when you get on your knees and you call Jesus and you yield and you surrender to him. And then you begin to make an effort. Because see, you gotta take, you gotta take a step. See, you can't ask God to deliver you from the addiction and not make some kind of effort. See, faith without works is dead. When you pray to God and ask him, and then you begin to make an effort through getting in the word, through total repentance, through total surrender. You begin to make an effort through getting in the right, getting the right source, the right help. And then when you get that help and you begin to apply the word and the principles of God of how these things destroy the temple, your body is the temple of Christ, and how they will destroy you, and how the enemy comes but to kill, steal, and to destroy. And you begin to decree and declare the word. You begin to see the word for what it really is. You know that all the enemy wants to do is literally destroy you. But that's nothing more than a demon. That's nothing more than a spirit that is taking control. Not only alcoholism or drug addiction, but he deals with your emotions. He wants you to commit suicide. Depression and oppression is another attack of the enemy. It's another stronghold that Satan used against the body of Christ. He wants you to take your life or he wants you to stay depressed or oppressed. It's a spirit that comes. It makes you feel lonely. It makes you feel like nobody loves you. It makes you feel like nobody cares. It's nothing more than a spirit. In other words, you've drawn away. It causes you to draw into yourself. And then it gives you all of these ungodly, unholy, unrighteous thoughts of, of, of things that's ungodly. Of, and then it causes you to become re resentful, envious, and malice, and angry, and, and hateful. These are spirits. And God will break these strongholds. He'll break these attacks off of your life if you will allow him to come in. Jesus will come in and see, he has, he has died in rose, and he has authority over addiction. He has authority over drugs. He has authority over cocaine, crack cocaine. He has authority over marijuana. He has authority over alcohol, gin, scotch, Jack Daniels, you name it. He has authority over all of that. But you've got to allow him to come in. You've got to allow him to bring the shift and to bring the change. See, he's overcome these things. 
I wrote a book years ago, Overcoming the Attacks of the Enemy. These are things that Satan does, and, it, and it's through demonic forces, it's through demonic attacks. See, it starts, as I said, with just a moment of, ple a moment of pleasure. And then before you know it, because you had took that moment of pleasure, you gave the enemy the okay to come and live inside. But you got to reject the enemy. See, you have to reject, reject drug addiction. See, you got to reject the spirit of drugs. You got to reject the demon that draws you to want to use drugs. See, you got to reject the demon that causes you to want to drink alcohol. That causes you, because it destroys your body. It can cause the cirrhosis of the liver. And all so many other things, hardness of arteries and so many other things that it does, destroys your, your, your immune system. It, it, it destroys your blood cells, white blood cells and red blood cells. It destroys those things. See, it is not meant for the body to indulge to the extent that it's beyond control. It's not meant for the body to consume because it's taking a pausing in your system. Anything the doctor does not prescribe that will, that will bring forth a healing in your body. Anything or any prescription that the doctor does not provide, and even amphetamines, that sometimes the enemy will take the, the prescriptions of the doctor and he will try to use them. In other words, you get hooked on those. Those are another form of drugs. Not, not just uh, uh, meth, meth, but uh, crack cocaine or cocaine or, or angel dust or any other thing that they use that you get hooked on. You can get hooked on, on regular medication and uh, codeine. All those types of medications, you get hooked on those things. And when you get hooked on, it's the same thing. You took it as a, as a result of just dealing with pain, but now all of a sudden, you it becomes a, a habit. Because guess what? The spirit comes in and he creates pain because he wants to taste more of that drug. He creates pain because he, want to feel, he wants you to feel more good or to feel better. So he creates pain. And the first thing you do is you go and grab a pill. But what you need to do is you need to say, I'm healed. By the stripes of Jesus Christ. Jesus died that I may not have pain. So you begin to decree and declare the word of God. If you, if the enemy comes to you with alcohol or uh, a uh, 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 taste of alcohol or something like that, nature, go get you some water. Go get you a, a, a soft drink. Drink anything but what the devil wants you to have. Drink anything but what the enemy is, the, is, is, is having you crave. When it comes to drugs, they, uh, go and sit down and, and just get in the word of God and begin to read the word. Put the word in the spirit because the word begins to make you sound. It, 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 see, you, right now, see, the enemy has all this control. You have to go to counseling. When you begin to put the word in you, you become sound. See, the word says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Sound simply means that you are in control. Sound simply means that you have the ability to make decisions on your own without having to pick up your phone and call somebody about uh, 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 the fact that you've lost control of your situation. But see, when the Holy Spirit comes in, he makes you sound. He fixes things so you don't have to pick up your phone and call nobody but Jesus. Because he said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. See, when you go to him, he will fix the problem. It may not happen overnight, but if you keep praying, if you keep giving him glory, honor, and praise for your deliverance, all of a sudden, you'll find your prayer. I remember many, many years ago, a woman of God came to the church, and she was hooked on drugs. And the Lord had me pray for her. And he had me to tell her to stick her tongue out. And I anointed her tongue. And God took the taste of drugs. He took the taste of nicotine. He removed all those things off of her and many other cases and many other men and women of God that, that has gone through deliverance that are totally free to this day because they wanted it. See, you've got to desire your deliverance. you got to desire to be free. Not only those some things that the enemy have you hooked on, dealing with emotional issues, low self-esteem is a spirit. You, 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 you always, you feel low. You feel like nobody loves you. you. In other words, you don't, you don't love yourself. That's low self-esteem. But God, the anointing of the Holy Spirit will deliver you from the spirit of low self-esteem. It, it started somewhere in your life, something somebody said or something somebody done to you or something somebody spoke that interjected and went in your spirit and it caused you to, to, to back away, to draw away, to draw it to yourself. And you never were able to break free from that. And God is saying today, I want to deliver you. I want to set you free from low self-esteem. He says, I love you with an unconditional love. He says, I break the spirits and the yokes of low self-esteem off of you, whoever I'm talking to right now. I deliver you from the stronghold of low self-esteem. You are somebody. I love you more than life itself. Love yourself. You are somebody. Don't let anybody belittle who you are. 
Don't let anybody take down who you are. You are just as equal because I am a God uh, that respects all. I am no respect of person. The same thing I do for one, I'll do for another. But you got to see that I made you beautiful. I made you wonderful. In other words, God says he didn't make anything that, that he didn't see good. So when God created and made you, he saw you good regardless of what people may say, regardless of how man may feel. Fat, small, it doesn't matter. God made you tall, skinny, short, it doesn't matter. He made you, but he made you wonderful. He made you good because he said everything that God made, he said it was good. So if he made you, he made you good. Now what the enemy may try to inject in your spirit, you got to reject it. Because see, that's an attack of the enemy. And then when the enemy attacks, he comes to bind you. Strongholds bind you. They keep you incarcerated. They won't let you go. They're demonic forces of the devil that battle in your mind. It's a battle in the mind. Another one that that uh, a lot of us deal with is porn and, and, and illicit sex and incest, pornography. That's a stronghold of the devil. That's a stronghold of the enemy. We have to pray and ask God to break that demon, reject that demon of porn. And when the enemy come at you with that spirit and try to get you to crave to go and look at porn, you got to say, Father, I can't handle this. I need you to deliver me from this. And ask God to break that stronghold. And he'll begin to break the stronghold of porn. Illicit sex, discontinuing desire of sex, everything you look at, you want to sleep with them. the lust of the eyes. That's all it is, is lust. It's a demon of lust. It's a spirit of lust. you got to see for what it is. And you got to ask God to deliver you from it. You got to ask God to set you free from that spirit. You got to reject that spirit. You got to tell that spirit when he comes at you, no, I won't, I won't fulfill your desire. No, I won't fulfill what you're asking me to do. No, you got to reject it. And when you reject it, then God comes in. And not only that incest, sleeping with relatives and family members, that's a demon. That's a force of the devil. That's ungodly. It's unrighteous. It's not of God. It's a demon. It's a spirit that's in operation on the inside. And some, uh, somehow or another, he's entered in. And he's causing you to do things that's ungodly, that's unholy. And incest is not of God. Sleeping with mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and uncles and aunts and nieces and cousins. That's not of God. That's ungodly. That's unholy. That's a spirit. That's a demonic attack of Satan. And you've got to call it for what it is. And then you've got to go to God, repent, and ask God to deliver you. Ask God to set you free from that stronghold. And when the enemy comes at you, reject that spirit. Bind that spirit. Begin to ask God to set you free. The Bible says, whatsoever you bind in earth, God binds also in heaven. When you begin to bind the spirit of alcoholism, you begin to bind the spirit of porn, you begin to bind the spirit of illicit sex and incest. When you begin to bind these spirits, as you bind them, the drug addiction spirits, this, the, these spirits that take control, when you begin to bind them in earth, God says, whatever you bind in earth, I bind also in heaven. So God gives you authority through Jesus Christ to bind the attacks of the enemy. And you've got to take authority over the enemy. See, see, in you, greater is he that's in you than the demon that's in the world. Greater is Jesus Christ. See, Jesus has to come on the inside. He's the only one that can truly break the addiction. He's the only. See, the doctors can give you medicine to, to, to deal with the matter. See, medicines don't solve the problem. They just pacify the problem. But when Jesus comes, he delivers the problem. If it's stress, if, it, if it's a, a, a spirit of suicide. See, drugs calm you down when you, when you have that moment. But what Jesus does, he delivers you. He fixed the problem completely. When he gets through with it, you don't have the problem no more. You're free. You're, de you're, 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 you're delivered. You have liberty. In other words, you don't have to worry about it no more. Because when Jesus comes, he takes that away from you. He casts that demon out of you. That stronghold has been holding you for years. He casts it out of you. And when he casts it out of you and you break free, the enemy can no longer attack your body. He can no longer come at you with those things. Why? Because you've been delivered. Because you've been set free. Why? Because Jesus is now living on the inside. The all of God, the Holy Spirit is now living on the inside. And God is getting the glory. He's getting down. Not only those things, not only pornography, but homosexuality is another one. That is a perverse spirit. That is a demon where men sleep with men. That is ungodly. God destroyed Solomon and Gomorrah for homosexuality and lesbianism. Those are spirits that are ungodly. Those are spirits that are, they go against nature. And God made man for woman and woman for man. I know, I know in our society today, that they are saying it's okay for a man to be married to a man and a woman to be married to a woman, but not so, said God. That was never his intentions. He made Adam for Eve and Eve for Adam. 
And I know some of you are not going to like this message, but it's the truth anyhow, because there's somebody out there that's looking at this that know it's wrong. There's somebody out there that's looking at this that wants to be delivered. They want to be set free. And you're the ones I'm talking to. I'm not talking to the world, but I'm talking to the body of Christ. And if the world is looking at it and it pertains to you and you want to be delivered, Jesus will set you free too. Because he died for the sin of the entire world. So you're included. If you want to be delivered, all you got to do is say, Jesus, come into my heart and take control of this thing that's, that's killing me, this thing that's destroying me, this thing that's turned my family members against me. They don't look at me the same way no more. They don't love me like they once loved me because of, of, because of, of the decision that I made to be a, a homosexual or I made to be a lesbian. See, it's a spirit. A lot of a lot of folks say, I'm born that way. But let me tell you something. God don't make decisions. If he made you a man, he made you a man. If he made you a woman, he made you a woman. He didn't make a decision. He didn't make a mistake in his decision. He made you who he wanted you to be. That spirit on the inside mounted that gave you the desire to be a, a woman or to be or to be married to a woman or to be married to a man. You gotta deal with this. It won't be unto me if I don't tell you the truth. It's not of God, it's ungodly, it's unholy. It's a demon straight from the pits of hell. It's a stronghold, but God, Jesus Christ, died to break the stronghold of lesbianism. He died to break the stronghold of homosexuality. He died to break every stronghold known unto man. There's no spirit Satan can hold against you. There's no spirit he can hold you in because Jesus paid the price. His name is above every name. His name is above every sickness. His name is above homosexuality. His name is above lesbianism. His name is above porn. His name is above addiction. His name is above alcoholism. His name is above incest. Crack cocaine, drugs. His name is above all of those. See, those things are, are ungodly. They're unholy. Fornication is another one. Young people that aren't married deal with. They, it's, it's a lust of the flesh. It's a almost uh, fornication is when you sleep with you you agree to sleep with someone that you're not married to. The Bible calls that fornication. We're all guilty of it at one time or another. I know I was guilty of it when I wasn't married. It's a it's a sin. It's iniquity. It's ungodly. It's unholiness. It's unrighteousness. But we have to understand and realize that Jesus came that we'll be free. It's nothing more than a spirit of lust that's controlling you. Nothing more than a spirit of lust that's ungodly, that's unholy, that's unrighteous. It's a spirit of lust that needs to be broken off of us. Adultery is another one. Many of us are guilty of adultery. And we have to ask God to forgive us for adultery. It's a spirit. It's ungodly, it's unholy, it's unrighteous. And we have to ask God to break the desire of sleeping with another partner other than our, our spouses, other than, than the, the woman or, or the man that God told us to marry. We have to ask God to forgive us for, for allowing these strongholds to take over us, allowing these strongholds to, to control us. It's nothing more than attacks of the enemy. See, these things come about because of the lust of the eye. When we lust, see, when we look at somebody and we, we begin to lust after their flesh, the next thing that spirit comes in, and all of a sudden, you know, you're in their face and you're trying to please your flesh. But it's ungodly. It's nothing more than a spirit. It's nothing more than an attack of Lucifer. Nothing more than an attack of the devil. Nothing more than the enemy telling you it's going to be okay. It's going to feel good. It lasts for a moment, but the pleasure, the pleasures of the world for a moment will destroy you and will cause you to go to hell. So you should ask Jesus to deliver you and set you free. We have to ask God to come in and break the strongholds of the enemy off of our lives. See, controlled substance, and I talked about that a moment ago. But controlled substance or um, uh, this medication that the doctors give us to control pain or control whatever we're going through. Uh, uh, some people deal are, bi are bipolars and they have a schizophrenia and they lose control at times. And they, 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 they have different personalities at times. And see, and they give you substances and drugs to control that. But the Bible talks about a man that had many spirits and said, Jesus came. And when he asked this man, who are thou? The spirit said, my name is Legion, but there are many of us. This man was dealing with bipolar. He was dealing with schizophrenia and so many other things. But God delivered him from those things. When Jesus came, the demons asked Jesus, if you cast us out, can we go into the swines? And Jesus said, go. And the authority in Jesus, they went out of the man and they went into the swans and the swans ran down into the river and drowned it themselves. See, spirits, and they need a body. Demons, they need a body. And see what they do? They use your body to fulfill their lustful desires. 
and see what God is saying is, I'm giving you keys today, and I'm giving you strategies of how to overcome strongholds and addictions of the devil, strongholds and attacks of the enemy. See, these are things that very, very few of us will discuss and very few of us will talk about, but these issues need to be addressed. They need to be spoken of. You need to know that God will deliver you from the strongholds, from alcoholism. He'll deliver you from addiction, crack cocaine, marijuana. He'll deliver you from all these different drugs that we take. All these things that we think are good. Little blue pills that we take that we feel are good. Can't think of the name of them right now. And so many others that are coming into existence. Things that haven't even been made known that's out there right now that's about to come into existence. It doesn't matter what it is. Jesus Christ will deliver you from all of it. He'll set you free from all of it. He'll break the addictions. He'll break the strongholds of the enemy off of your life and fill you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Fill you with joy, unspeakable. He'll take oppression and depression and he'll give you joy. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. He'll take alcoholism and he'll replace it with a conscious, a subconscious. He'll cure your liver. He'll cure your kidneys. He'll heal you and he'll deliver you. Some of us are just addicted to food. We're just addicted to soft drinks. Things that's bad. Too much sugar. These kinds of things. These are things that will destroy the body. Apostle is guilty of sugar. I love coffee and sugar. I love things like that. But we have to pray and ask God to deliver us from these things. To set us free from these things. To help us to get in, the, in, in and around nutritionists. And I thank God for our nutritionists that share with us. And they're pulling us to help us to keep us healthy. Because see, God don't just want you blessed, but he wants you prosperous. Apostle Paul said, I desire above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thou so prosperous. See, you, you don't want to be a Christian and live a condemned life. You want to be a Christian and every time somebody sees you, you're immediately condemned because of the attack of the enemy. You don't want to be condemned because of the attack of Satan. But you want to be delivered. You want to be free. You want to, you want to move according to the will of God. In other words, you when you when you get in the church on Sunday, you don't want to be condemned by something you did last night, clubbing all night long. These are ungodly things. They're sinful things. These things bring about demonic forces. They bring about strongholds. If you say you're a born-again believer, then you need to be a born-again believer. And I know we ain't, they ain't been able to go to the clubs here lately because everything has been shut down. But I know some of you sitting there and say, Lord, I can't wait to get in the club and get my dance on. But you should be saying, Lord, you've been so good and so merciful and the coronavirus haven't touched my life. And I thank you that I'm yet saved. I thank you that I'm yet in the land of the living. Forgive me for the sins and iniquities I've done up to this point. Because see, God's shaking America right now. He's shaking the world right now with this coronavirus. And the reason is because he's drawing the church to himself. He's drawing the church on their knees. The Bible said that there would be a great falling away. Look, there's a falling away. God has pulled us to him. Self, that he may speak directly into our spirits. That he may get our attention. That he may uh, cause us to surrender and to yield and repent of our sins and our need. The word says that my people that are called by my name, will turn from their wicked ways, humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Then what I hear from heaven and heal their land. But not only seek his face, but repent of their sins. And I'm paraphrasing. See, we've got to repent. We can't just go to God and pray and ask for grace and mercy. we got to acknowledge our faults. we got to acknowledge our sins. We've got to acknowledge that we are sinners saved by grace. We've got to acknowledge that we need salvation every day. We need Jesus to save us every day that we've sinned every single day. Sometimes you sin and don't know it. That's why I wonder if you don't notice anything about me. When I get on these calls, I repent for sin and iniquity daily. Because this is what the word says. It says repent of your sins daily. That means to openly confess, to openly acknowledge them. Because when you confess and when you openly acknowledge them, God will deliver you. He'll set you free. The enemy don't want you free. He don't want you to live in, but he wants you bound and controlled. But today Jesus died. He overcame the attacks of Satan. He overcame the attacks of the enemy. He's breaking his strongholds off of your life. He's breaking addiction off of your life. He's breaking pornography off of your life. He's breaking incest off of your life. He's breaking homosexuality off of your life. He's breaking lesbianism off of your life. He's breaking fornication off of your life. He's breaking adultery off of your life. He's breaking drug uh, addiction, cocaine off of your life. Contro use of controlled substance. He's breaking it off of your life. 
It brings about panic. It causes heart failure. These things cause heart failure. Irregular heartbeat comes as a result of cocaine and, and the use of drugs and things of that nature. But Jesus will break those things off of your life. He will deliver you and he'll set you free. And the enemy don't want you to know that you can be delivered. These demons, the demon of adultery, the demon of controlled substance, the demon of cocaine, the demon of lesbianism, the demon of homosexuality, the demon of incest, the demon of illicit sex, the demon of alcoholism, the demon of drug addiction. These spirits can be broken. You can be delivered. The demon of oppression. The demon of, 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 of oppression. The demon of suicide. That comes to tell you it's okay to take your life. You can be delivered from these strongholds. You can be delivered from these demons. And this is something that really needed right now. Because a lot of people are in a place right now. They don't know which way to turn. Homes are broken. They break up homes. They break up marriages. These spirits destroy homes. They destroy marriages. They cause you to lose jobs, cause you to lose finances. You lose your homes and vehicles, lose money as a result of sin, these types of sins and these types of iniquity. Families are destroyed because Satan comes in through one of these, these strongholds that I'm naming right now. He comes in and he tries to destroy you as a result of your, your salvation as a result of these sins and these iniquities. When you say, see, the enemy comes at you, and I said salvation, that's what I meant, because when you say, that's where the enemy comes. See, let me tell you something. Satan don't know anything in your future, but he know your past, and he know it very well, and he know what pleases you. He know what satisfies your flesh. So those are the things that he come at you with, the things that satisfy your flesh. But you got to say, I'm a new creature in Christ. And once, what once satisfied my flesh no longer satisfied my flesh because the Holy Spirit fulfills all of those desires. Where I've been empty on this inside and felt like I needed a man or feel like I needed a woman. Where I've been empty on the inside and felt like I needed drugs or felt like I needed uh, methamphet and amphetamines or felt like I needed controlled substance. While I was empty on the inside, Jesus came in and he filled the void with the fire of the Holy Ghost. He filled the void with the, with, with the oil of the anointing. He filled the void with the presence of God. See, Jesus comes on the inside and he empties out everything that's ungodly, every demon, every stronghold, every spirit of Satan. Jesus comes on the inside and he breaks yokes. He died to destroy yokes. He died to destroy strongholds, but he got up with all power. And when he got up, he got up to break the hole, to break the stronghold. By your stripes, by Jesus' stripes, you are healed. See, see, Satan don't want you to know that you can be totally healed. He don't want you to know that you can be totally delivered. He don't want you to know that you can totally be set free. See, God will totally set you free. He'll break every stronghold. He'll break every yoke of the enemy. You've been crying out to God. If you're looking at this video, you're in a season where you've been crying out to God. And God has heard your cry. And he said, my son and my daughter, I will deliver you. I will set you free right now if you'll receive it. If you'll act on my word, if you'll repent, fall on your knees and repent. Get in my presence and acknowledge that you can't control it. Acknowledge that you have no control over it. And give it to me and I'll take control. See, Satan don't want you to know you can give it to Jesus and he'll take control. And just begin to give him praise for delivering you. That's okay if you slip up and fall again. Just praise him for deliverance. Because guess what? Eventually you're going to be delivered and you won't fall back into it again. Eventually you're going to be set free and you won't fall back into it again. Because God came to set the captive free. Whom the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. I need to stop right now because I need to give you some word. But I want you to know that in God there's no failure. He will deliver you. He will break strongholds. Jesus has overcome strongholds of the enemy. Satan don't want you to know that you can be delivered. He don't want you to know that you can be set free. He don't want you to know that God will work a miracle in your life. He don't want you to know that Jesus died. St. John 14 and 27 says it like this. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth peace, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. So, see, see, when things happen that's ungodly, when things happen that's unholy, the first thing that happens is we feel, we feel like 
Jesus, God don't really care. God don't really love me. I hear the word of the Lord saying in this particular passage of Scripture, God says, don't be troubled because you've fallen. Don't be troubled because you've erred. But get up. Acknowledge your faults. Acknowledge your sins. And repent. And when the enemy try to drive you to the computer or try to drive you to those DVDs, burn those DVDs of porn. Take them and burn them. And then delete those pages. Stop receiving, picking up those magazines, those hustling magazines, and those those uh, uh, penthouse magazines. Ask God to deliver you from it. Throw that mess away. It is of no value. It brings no. In, in other words, it, it it cannot deliver you if you if you're asking God for deliverance. You got to take the step to destroy these things. If you're asking God to deliver you, you got to make an effort to not go to the store and buy alcohol or ask somebody to buy it for you. Cigarettes and nicotine. If you if you want to be delivered from it, you got to throw the cigarettes away, and you got to ask God to take the spirit of nicotine away from you. See, you have to ask God to break the stronghold. See, this is how deliverance comes. Yeah, yeah, they got they got guns that you can chew and things like that. And these things, it, it, if that's what it takes to get you started, so be it. But then you got to ask God to deliver you. Some of you hooked on these these electronic cigarettes. God will deliver you. That's a that's a that's a spirit. That's a demon that is controlling you. But God will set you free. See, He comes to give you peace on the inside. See, you won't have to worry about getting, continuing, remaining on these things because Jesus will give you perfect peace. He'll deliver you from these things. He'll set you free. St. John, chapter 17. Right here where you are. In St. John. Look at chapter 17. I want you to look at verses 14 through 17. Verses 14 through 17. And it reads as follows. I have given them my word, and the world hated them. Because they are not of this world, of the world, even as I am out of the world. See, when you surrender, and see, right now, you're getting the word of God, that word that will deliver you, that word that will set you free. And see, those people that are used to you doing what you do with them, they're going to begin to hate you. They're not going to understand why you all of a sudden change. They're not going to understand why you're acting like that. But you're not acting, you're for real. You're being delivered for real. You're being set free for real. They're not going to understand why you change, why you don't want to be a lesbian no more, why you don't want to be a homosexual no more, because God has delivered you. The fire and the power of God will deliver you. It will set you free. It will break the strongholds. So you're going to be attacked. You're going to be ridiculed, so get ready. They're coming at you. But what you've got to do is, is not fall to what they're saying. It's not fall to the tricks of the enemy. You know it feels good. You know it's okay. You can't fall to that. But you've got to stand firm and let God totally set you free. Because he'll take the switch out of your way, out of your, out of your, out of you, men. Women, you'll dress like men. You'll dress like women instead of men, correction. You put on, you put on dresses and you you'll be who you are. You'll be delivered. You'll be set free. Look at the next verse. 15. He says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. But thou shouldest keep them from evil. See, when evil come at you, see, because of you, you're asking for deliverance. First thing the enemy is going to do is he's going to send his force. He's going to send your favorite friend, or your so-called friend. He's going to send that one that you admire, that one that you love so dearly. They're going to come at you with the same things you're asking God to deliver you from. But Jesus is stronger in you than that thing coming at you outside of you. Greater is he that's in you than he is in the world. See, Jesus will make you sound. The word of God will make you sound. The word of God will make you take a stand. It will make you stand up. And when you take that stand, and when you stand up, the stronghold the enemy had on you, you will realize it's no longer there. The desire the enemy was putting in your spirit, you will realize it's no longer there. Why? Because Jesus prayed for your deliverance. He prayed that the devil not be able to attack you. See, when you surrender it to God, God puts a hedge around you. He covers you in the blood. When you reject that spirit, see, you got to resist. The Bible says resist the devil. Submit unto God and resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. So every demon that comes at you through this matter. Look at verse number uh, 16. It says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. See, when you go into Christ, you, become, you, you have to relinquish the things of the world. So you have to relinquish the things that please the flesh. 
Drugs please the flesh, but it, it doesn't affect the spirit. See, the word I'm giving you goes into your spirit. See, when your spirit changes, your flesh will come in compliance with the shift and the change in your spirit. So you're dealing with demonic forces and demonic attacks. But see, what God does is he, he shifts your spirit. He changes your spirit. He All things are passed away. He gives you a new spirit. And see, when he gives you a new spirit, the things you once desired can no longer stay there. And see, homosexuality and lesbianism, drug addiction, alcoholism, uh, 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 adultery, uh, 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 fornication, all of these things is ungodly, all these things is unholy. Uh, use of, of drugs and medication, all these things. When God gives you a new spirit, all these things have to go. Because the Holy Spirit says, I cannot dwell in an unclean temple. So God gives you a new spirit. So the Holy Spirit can come in and live inside. See, when you repent and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then the Holy Spirit can come in. And when he comes in, he begins to clean you up. He begins to take away your desire. He begins to cast out those demons and those spirits that's coming at you. And he'll set you free. And he'll deliver you because that's his will. See, Jesus died that you may be born again. He died that you may be free. He got up that you may be free. He got up with power. See, the power is in the name of Jesus Christ. So you say, I got to say, Father, deliver me in Jesus Christ's name. Your son, cover me in the blood of Jesus. Take this demon from me in the name of Jesus. Take this stronghold from me in the name of Jesus. See, that's how you break the stronghold. You have to say it in the name of Jesus Christ. 17, sanctify them through. Thy truth, thy word is truth. See, you can be sanctified through the word of God because it is God's word that's true. See, and when you come to God and you seek God and you believe God, the word of God will deliver you. Jesus died for sin. He died for iniquity. And all the things I'm telling you bring about sin. They, are, they bring about iniquity and godliness and holiness. And this is what the enemy wants you to continue to indulge in. He wants you to continue to do. St. John 15, go back up to chapter 15. We're almost done. St. John chapter 15, verses 19 through 22. Stroll down just a minute. Verse 19. Well, let's look at verse number 18 first. 18 says, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. So, because you will not continue to do the things that's ungodly. Because you will not continue to do the things that's unholy. The world will hate you. See? Control is a spirit of witchcraft. I didn't mention control, but it's a demonic force. It's a spirit of the devil that's an operation. God put it in my spirit just now to say something about control. See, when the world hates you, it hates you because it can no longer control you. It hates you because it can no longer do what you will no longer do what it desired or what it loved. See, demons hate you when you resist them and when you reject them. See, the power that they have over you, they no longer have that power. The authority that they no longer have, they had on you, they no longer have that authority. Why? Because the greater authority, Jesus Christ now lives on the inside. The greater authority, the Holy Spirit now lives on the inside. The greater authority, the Father lives on the inside. So you become one with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So what was holding you in captivity, now it's broken. It's taken off of you. And this is the reason the devil's man. This is the reason the enemy is man. Because you can no longer be controlled. Look at verse 19 in chapter 15 of St. John. It says, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. See, if you're of the world, the world love you. Because, but because ye are not of the world. See, when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you're no longer of the world. So you don't have to go to the world for solutions to the problems that God can deliver you from. You no longer have to go to the world to seek healing when Jesus can heal, deliver, and set you free. See, you, you, you're no longer of the world. See, now you, your spirit is shifted. Your spirit is not connected to the Father. So now you got to go to the Father with your problems. You got to go to the Father with your addictions. You got to go to the Father and ask Him to deliver you and to set you free. For whom the Son of Man sets free, the Word says, is free indeed. See, Jesus will deliver you. He will heal you. He'll set you free. And the enemy won't be able to do anything about it but get mad. Second part of, of verse number 19 in, in St. John 15. It says, but I have chosen you out of the world. See, Jesus chooses you out of the world. He breaks strongholds. He breaks addiction. He chooses to deliver you. He chooses to set you free from sin and iniquity. Therefore, the world hated you in the last part of that verse. He said, because I came to set you free. Because I came to deliver and to heal you. Now. 
you can be free. Thank you, Father. Some of you are dealing with, with problems with, with, with ex-boyfriends and, 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 and ex-girlfriends, and they won't leave you alone. They're, they're constantly threatening you, but Jesus will break every threat. The power of Jesus will break every threat. It doesn't matter about people threatening you because you won't date them or continue to, to deal with them anymore. God will break that stronghold. He'll break that yoke off of the off of, off of your life. All you got to pray is say, Jesus, set me free from this individual. Jesus, deliver me from this individual. See, because you're being controlled. See, that's a, a spirit of manipulation and control. And God breaks the demon of manipulation. He breaks the demon of control. He breaks that stronghold off of your life. And he sets you free that you may go forth and do the will of the Father. Look at chapter uh, uh, St. John 50, verse 20. Remember the word that I say unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. See, we're not greater than Jesus. We're servants. It says, if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. So you can expect persecution. You can expect the enemy to come at you because you have sought to shift, because you have sought to change. You can expect to be talked about. You can expect to be lied on. You can expect to be ridiculed. When you take a stand, the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to remind you of all your past. They're going to remind you of all the things you've done, how you was this and how you was that and how you did this and how you did that. And you can say, that was yesterday. I'm a new creature today. I'm delivered today. I'm set free today. God has delivered me. Look at the next verse. It says, if they have kept my sins, they will keep yours also. See, Jesus speaks in this verse. He says, you're going to be ridiculed. You're going to be talked about. But because you're a child of God, and you're going to be persecuted because you're a child of God. He says, if you keep my sins, they will keep yours too. See, Jesus simply makes it plain and simple. Now, let me read that verse again. If they have kept my sins, they will keep yours. He, he, he says, the enemy is going to come against you. He's going to attack you. But if you decree and declare the word, the word will keep you. If you decree and declare the word, the word will deliver you. If you decree and declare the word, that's why he says in that first verse, remember the word I spake, said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If you remember what Jesus said, and you decree and declare, I'm not greater than Jesus. If they attack Jesus, they're going to come after me. See, that's your saving word right there. That's your healing word right there. That's your delivering word right there. Understanding because you back away from it, you're, you're going, going to be, be attacked. attacked. Understand that because, because you change, you're, you're going, going to be talked about. about. You're, you're going, going to be ridiculed. ridiculed. You're, you're going, going to be lied on because, because you made up in your mind that you want to be delivered. Because, because you made up in your mind that you want to be set free. free. You're, you're going, going to be talked about. about. You're, you're going, going to be ridiculed. ridiculed. So expect it. You're, you're going, going to suffer as a result of choosing to do what is right. Look at verse number 21 in St. John 15. It says, But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake. Because they know not him that sent me. Jesus said, they're going to attack you because you are you, you accepted Jesus Christ. They're going to attack you because you're holy holy as they call us now. They're going to attack you because you've decided that you want to live and not die. And decree and declare the works of the Lord. You've decided that Jesus came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. You decided that you're going to live and not be oppressed or, or depressed. You decided that you're going to live and not die from the overdose of drugs. You decided that you're going to live and not be a lesbian or a homosexual. You decided that you're going to live and live in stealth and amphetamines. And you're going to live. In other words, you, God said, I came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. In other words, you, you shall live and not die. And you made up your mind that I want to live, not die. 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not Sin. See, when Jesus comes, see, this word condemns. This word delivers. This word sets free. And Jesus said, they didn't know they were in sin until I came and told them that you're a sinner. I came and told you that you were traditional and religious. I came and told you that you make excuses for sin, and your excuses don't go with God. In other words, God rejects excuses. There is no excuse. Because Jesus came that you can be delivered. He came that you can be set free. So you have no excuse. Your cloak is not taken away from you because you know it's sin. You know it's ungodly. You know it's unholy. And woe be unto me if I tell you not the truth. Whether you like it or not, whether I'm ridiculed to talk about it, I'm going to tell you the truth anyway. Because you know what? You don't have heaven or hell to put me in or anyone around you. We have to give an account to God. It is appointed a man to live once and then the judgment. And we've got to see it for what it is. 
is the truth whether we accept it or not. Is the truth truth whether we ever change? Because see, the truth will find you out. It will bring conviction. It will judge you. God's word, if, it, if, if, if God's word is not going to bring is not bringing con, uh, judgment, if it's not, if it's not uh, convicting you, then it's not doing what it's supposed to do. If God's word is not bringing deliverance, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Man can't deliver you. Jesus delivers. Jesus heals. Jesus sets free. It is the power of God. The kingdom of God is with power. It's with authority. It does the work. We're the vessels. But Jesus Christ does the healing. He's the one that does the deliverance. Look at the last part of that verse. It says, but now they have no, no choke for their sin. You have no excuse. You've been stripped of your excuse, is what the word says. What you were using as an excuse is no longer an excuse. Now you know that you're attacked or attacks of demons. St. John 16, 28. I'm sorry. St. John chapter 16. Go there for a moment. Look at verse 25. 25 through verse 28. The works, the works of the Holy Spirit. Verses 25 through 28. Let me go down. I have overcome the world, Jesus says in this verse. I have overcome the world. I want to read it for you. I'll get to that verse in a moment. It says, These things I have spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. Jesus says, now, I'm showing you the day will come when you will know plainly what God, what God is, who God is. Look at the next verse. He says that the day shall that, correction, at that day ye shall ask in my name, and I will say not unto you that I will pray for the Father. He says, the day going to come when you ask in my name, and I'm not going to say I'm going to pray to the Father. He says, I will not say, he says, and I will say not unto you that I will pray to the Father. He says, the day is coming that I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say I'm going pray to pray for you. I'm not going to pray for the Father. Look at the next verse. For the Father himself loveth you because ye have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. Jesus says, the Father loves you because you love me. See, God, God will deliver you. you. Because, because you love, love Jesus Christ. Christ. See, when, when you accept this, Lord, Lord, Lord say, I can't stop the love of Jesus. Jesus. But, but if you keep striving, see, the race is not given to the swift nor the strong, strong. But he who would do it. So if you keep striving, if you keep making an effort, you're going to be delivered. If you keep making an effort, you're going to be set free. If you keep making an effort, God is going to release you from the strongholds, from the bonds and the attacks of Satan, from the yokes of the demonic forces in the airway. He's going to set you free from the, the fire of the Holy Ghost will burn every demon. It will burn every principality of darkness. It will burn every yoke of the enemy on you and off of you. Verse 28, it says, I came forth from the Father, and I am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. Jesus says, I came to set the captive free. I came with a mandate from my Father. I came with a heavenly agenda. I fulfilled what my Father has called me to do. And now I'm leaving and I'm going back to my Father. He says, I'm leaving the world and I'm going back to my Father. See, Jesus lets us know that in verse 33, he says this. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Now, catch it. See, Jesus is releasing this word because the enemy has used this word to hold you in captivity. But Jesus says, through me, you will be delivered. Through me, you have peace. Through me, you can be set free. He says, in the world, you have tribulation. See? But be of good cheer, he says. I will overcome the world. Jesus says, now, you can break free from addictions. You can break free from every sin and every iniquity. You can break free from the things that's been holding you in captivity. You can break free from alcoholism. You can break free from emotional addictions. You can break free from lesbianism, porn, illicit sex, and incest. You can break free from, from fornication and adultery. You can break free from drug addictions, schizophrenia, all of these different ungodly things. Bipolar. Uh, being controlled by people who really don't love you. The spirit of control, the spirit that dominates you, that spirit that belittles you, that spirit that causes you to, to have low self-esteem. Jesus said, you can be free 
from all those things. For I've overcome the world. That means I've overcome the attacks of the enemy, the spirits in the enemy, in everything Satan did. See, the world is a system, and the Bible says Satan is the prince of the world. But guess what? Jesus is the prince of peace. He's still healing. He's still delivering. And he's still setting the captive free. And whom the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. Overcoming the attacks of the enemy and breaking his strongholds. Let me say that again. You can overcome the attacks of the enemy. And Jesus Christ is still breaking his strongholds. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this word. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Now, Father, we repent for allowing the enemy to hold us in strongholds. We repent for lesbianism. We repent for homosexuality. We repent for incest. We repent for drug addiction. We repent for fornication. We repent for adultery. We repent for that spirit of bipolar, that spirit of control and manipulation. We repent for all ungodliness, everything that we've done for idolatry, everything we've said, everything we've thought that would keep you, Father, from getting all the glory, from getting all the honor. We repent from all sins and all iniquities, known and unknown. We acknowledge them now. And we ask you now, Father, in Jesus' name, to break the spirits and the demons of Satan off of our lives. Break the strongholds off of our lives of Satan. Release us from every addiction of alcohol and drugs, from lesbianism and homosexualism, from pornography, from illicit sex, from lust of the eyes. Release us from lust of the flesh. Break these strongholds. Pride of life. Break that stronghold. We repent of it. Break it off of us right now, Father. Things we've not called by name. Uh, uh, narcotics and, and, and medications and taking drugs. And break those strongholds in the mighty name of Jesus. Break them off of us. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost consume it now. Every demon from the peace of hell. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn every crevice, every crack, seed rooted from where it started, God. Whatever caused it, God, break that stronghold where it began, whether it's through the loss of a loved one, the loss of a friend, a broken relationship, whatever it caused it, God. Loss of, 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 of a job, loss of finances, whatever caused it, where it was rooted, God. Go and get the root of it. Break it now by the power and the authority given in, in the, the mighty name of Jesus, we vow to give you all the glory. We vow to give you all the honor. We vow to take a step toward you, Jesus, to do a 180 degree turn and receive you as our Lord and our Savior. We repent now for that sin. And we thank you that you cover us in the blood of Jesus Christ. And we give you glory, honor, and praise even now in Jesus' name. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to take this time to invite you to accept him as your Lord and your Savior. So, Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, just say that. Say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, your word says that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of all sins. I repent of all iniquity. I repent of all ungodliness. I repent of all unholiness. All unrighteousness. I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. So I believe in my heart that Jesus died and rose for my sins. And I confess with my mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ is my Savior. Amen. Now, if you just pray that prayer, you just accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. And the angels in heaven are rejoicing because one more soul is saved. One more soul has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The devil is mad and God is glad. And we give him glory, honor, and praise for you accepting him. This is Apostle Barry Space. Thank you so much for taking the time to view this video. And do click on that stream below and subscribe 
So when you click that subscribe button, when I release a message, it'll come to you. to let you know that I've posted something new or that I've gone live on live stream. We bid you God's free. We pray God cover, shield, and protect you. And watch over you and keep you covered in the blood. And remember, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. God bless you, you, and especially you. Bye now.